long now. All right, this is for all the panelists. Uh, what is one major change that has really impacted your business uh, because of the pandemic? Uh, and then what measures have you taken or do you plan to take to adjust to that impact? Let's head over to Irza. Sure, Reddit. I think all in all, it goes back to the people. Um, so starting in March, we've been putting our people uh, to work from home, uh, like becoming like remote first company, I think for the last six months. Uh, but it was kind of challenging at the beginning, but thankfully from the day Kata launch, uh, we've applied like two days work from home every week. And when we started it, it's just about turning it into company wide. And then that's also changes on how we interact to our customers because we are a B2B company and mostly dealing with enterprises. Uh, during the first two months, I would say that's a big hassle because none of these big conglomerate groups, these enterprises, they're accustomed of working remotely, right? Sometimes the systems are not there. They're trying to figure out how to use Zoom, Google Hangout, and, and whatnot. Uh, plus, uh, for example, we need to get uh, some deal signed, contest got signed. We have to you know, send, send a delivery courier, go to the uh, director of something, uh, to their personal house and get the signature, going back again. So I think we just have to be agile and uh, adaptive with the current situation. I think that's all in all, if, if we take a look from the current, um, how we operate. The second one, when it comes to the business itself, uh, thankfully as a platform for, uh, so for enterprise software, uh, we can pick and choose the industry we wanna focus on. Uh, indeed, some of our customers in retail and transportation sector, uh, they have to renegotiate the payment sometimes to reduce the contract or for example, try to find a way to find like a mutual, uh, I would say agreement in this case, however they are sector start driving. For example, like telecom, e-commerce, uh, and then for example, financial service. So we just double down our effort when it comes to commercial business development related to the sectors that are still uh, growing and thriving. Thank you. Uh, how about you, Patrick? Yeah, Radith, uh, first of all, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's great to share this panel with uh, a lot of uh, uh, old, old friends. Um, so I think from the investor side, um, you know, one of the things that's important to us, especially in early stage companies, um, it is a little bit sort of prohibitive um, not being able to meet you know, founders for the first time, right? I think in our line of work, I think it's very important to establish you know, some connection or some chemistry you know, you really have to vibe out, right, with, with, uh, with, with the founders that you meet for the first time. So obviously with COVID, um, that's made that challenging. But I think, you know, given that we do run a very concentrated book, uh, we don't invest in that many companies, and we are Indonesia only, our cadence of investing in companies is only usually just a deal a quarter, right, or sometimes two deals a quarter. So I think, you know, we've, we've you know, kept pace at that, right? So obviously, you know, during COVID, we closed the deal in Q2 another deal in Q3, so we're right at pace. Um, but I think, you know, meeting founders for the first time, I think now we're slowly starting to get back into it. Okay. Uh, Nico, how about your, how, how, how's it going on your end? Oh, um, yeah, um, well, we, we did quite a, uh, a review, um, uh, monthly review right now on the, on the macro side of the, of the business because um, because uh, uh, apa? because I think that uh, that's 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 a lot to be uh, considered right now. Uh, for example, we were about to uh, uh, to take on tourism uh, in the beginning of the year, uh, and you know we were in the talk with the PU, um, you know major. Uh, uh, startup um, and then uh, and then you know apparently with the with the COVID thing uh, the idea of investing in that kind of valuation uh, is almost impossible but we but that, that, that doesn't mean that we uh, we cancel the deal but we just postpone the deal uh, and uh, obviously um when we thought the, the 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 covid will last only three four months it will last until probably like mid of next year so we are considering a lot of uh, uh different strategies right now for uh, bri uh, ventures um 
and uh, the number of pipeline is 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 definitely down here, yeah, Pangga. It's uh, I think from our uh, from the data that I have, um, I guess, you know, there's there's uh, uh, since to, since 2009, Indonesia has re has been receiving uh, for about 14 billion uh, uh, worth of investment. Uh, that was spread for uh, 900 plus deals, and uh, on average, since 2009, it was uh, the apa? the the investment in each startup um, ballpark number nya is like 40 million something. Um, but now we are looking into uh, 2020, where the number of deals is significant, significantly reduced. And the uh, number as of now, uh, mid of 2020. Um, so last year, 2019, it was about 2.53 billion uh, money coming uh, into Indonesia. Uh, now it's about, you know, less than a billion from, uh, from my data, I, uh, I guess. So, yeah, uh, so in, in, in a sense, there's, there's a lot of uh, changes. And especially when we, uh, when we deal with uh, growth stage companies, right? We 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 are invest. Uh, uh, we are a growth stage uh, series B and plus uh, investor, um, and it's kind of um, and it's kind of um, uh, 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 quite a challenge for us. But here's the deal: um, we were about to go into um, into a fund of funds as one of our strategy, uh, and then with this. Uh, 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 with this situation, we sh we shift entirely the strategy to to focus our, on 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 our Sembrani Nusantara funds uh, and Sembrani Nusantara funds. Instead of us doing fund of funds to other uh, 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 GP, we become the GP for the uh, many investors that hasn't uh, been uh, uh, able to invest in uh, quite a good uh, number of deals. So. Um, and uh, and it's quite a and it is quite a progress really because uh, because we thought initially um, about the uh, investors will will stay away from the high risk uh, profile of uh, uh, portfolio, but instead when we pitch to few guys, uh, there's a sense of nationalism into this that right now focusing on Indonesia like uh, Patrick uh, mentioned is. Is 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 about is is one of the best strategy that I've ever done, you know, uh, focusing on Indonesia uh, again. Because back in MDI, we when we launched our first funds and and Irsan and, and and Marshall, obviously, they are my uh, about my first batch, yeah, my first month batch. Uh, when we look into companies in in 2015, 2016, um, companies like Gojek wasn't even a. Uh, uh, um, you know, uh, a unicorn uh, uh, type of uh, companies. So we we scout the earth for new technologies to bring into Indonesia. Uh, and we uh, back in uh, MDI days, uh, we in, in invested in eleven countries. Um, but right now, with BRI Ventures and with Sembrani especially, and it's with this situation, it's kind of open up you know uh, a new opportunity for uh, uh, investors such as uh, ourselves. To kind of look deeper into um, uh, apa tuh, pemulihan, uh, recovery, maybe right? Yeah. Oh, wow. gitu. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't make sense. Just stop me. <laughs> it does. It does. Uh, and Marshall, you uh, definitely your business should be uh, doing well. How about yourself? How what what has changed? Yeah. Sure. Well, in the past, like when we started PreVID. Uh, like four years ago, the main hindrance for our growth is about the rate of the digitalization of our prospective customers. So our product, digital ID, electronic KYC, biometric checking to the government database, issuing digital certificate, digital signature, Selling them to banks, insurance, leasing companies who, who are not tax safe yet, yet, like four years ago, it's like selling Netflix or Android TV to households 
they don't even have uh, Wi-Fi connections, internet connections, right? So it's useless when I talk to banks and they say, yeah, yeah, of course we would like to adopt digital signature, but for what? For account opening, but I don't have the app yet. I don't have the infrastructure, the dashboard yet to process online applications. Credit cards, loans, or account structure are still built for paper-based documents. But with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, then ready or not, they have to embrace uh, the change. They have to change now uh, to digital onboarding, right? Uh, even uh, the Financial Service Authority uh, or OJK, they they issued a letter to all of the insurance. So. So based on the existing regulation, actually, all of the unit link insurance yeah, must be, uh, the transaction must be closed using wet signatures on paper. But now the Financial Service Authority give the freedom for the insurance companies to, to do it using digital signatures. But they don't have the apps yet. So how Pre-VID uh, changed uh, the plan is that we pause most of our core product development and instead we are building a total solution for, for our prospective customers. So as we could see, like most of the major in global insurance uh, companies uh, right now for their operation in Indonesia, they are already using pre-VID. But we are not only selling the digital signature or the, or the uh, EKYC itself, uh, but we give them the total solution. So we built the web for their agents, for their bank assurance agents, for their customers to sign up for uh, the unit link insurance. Same with the banks, credit card applications. We don't only provide the, our product, the digital signature, but we built the front end of their website for the customer application form. We built even the dashboard uh, for their underwriter to process the application because traditionally they process the applications from table to table, papers, right? Right now they process it digitally. They don't have dashboard. We provide that up until to the connection to the loan origination system. And even uh, further, uh, property developers. So we are helping some major property developers the apartment purchasing platform so that they could just uh, purchase the apartment up until signing the uh, loan agreement for, for, for the mortgage. Yeah, so we sacrifice our core product roadmap to, to build the solutions for our customers during this time. You really have like gone far from, <laughs> from <industry>. yeah. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm going to continue on that theme, uh, and this is only for the founders. We'll, we'll get to you, investors, uh, but for the founders, here's an model show, right? Uh, feel free if you want to uh, answer first. Uh, so, the fact is that uh, most startups, right, are struggling, and then uh, some have closed permanently uh, because of COVID. Uh, not just like those uh, very uh, old school uh, startups, but some 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 startups who are seemingly like they are supposedly uh, thriving in this like online only work right but then however they have failed and then uh well they should work right so uh what plans uh they should put in place right to support this growth in this process uh were were these plans uh already part of your roadmap or is it just uh, introduce adjustments because of the, the, the crisis? Sure, okay, that's a very good question. Uh, quite similar to Marshall here, uh, when it comes to roadmap, a lot of things uh, we have to deprioritize and find things that might be, uh, I think, be, be helpful for our customers and eventually something that opens up a new market by using our current product and technology. So, uh, I can, I can share a high level here. So Kata for the last two, three years, we've been serving enterprises and today we still are, uh, but right now we are looking the potential way and how we can help SMBs because, you know, after the past baby and the lockdowns, it's so hard for people to go to restaurants, dine in, and everybody's looking for a way to have a 
digital customers engagement but for to small businesses to have apps for example it doesn't make any sense right the cost the hassle and then they've already got the platform from the marketplaces uh, the e-commerce the on-demand but they're looking for a way they can control the channel when it comes to the customer interaction so this becomes a new way we see the catalyst of of this opportunity uh, in helping those uh, small businesses to thrive and i think what i'd like to quote is something from um, i think uh anderson horowitz they mentioned about it's time to build so it is it's time to build you think about re rethink about your value proposition for the market how to think not only to survive but to thrive but all in all if you think about the fundamentals it's all about thinking not all it's not always about growth at all costs but how you can maintain the growth by being profitable so that's been our mantra since this is day one so we never do something like steep discount pricing or burning the money for the customers um, we are more uh, conscious so to speak when it comes to unit economics to make sure uh, it is the value we deliver to the customers makes sense when it comes to the pricing and uh, it helps us to grow and the customers grow eventually okay. so i think that's what i'd like to share okay thank you uh how about you marshall uh was this uh, part of your roadmap or is it you had just have to do like a quick adjustment yeah, of yeah yeah one of the things that that uh, that that's uh unprecedented for us is is to spend uh, big on advertisement so uh historically we almost spent like like almost zero on advertisement since since 2015 yeah but uh when the pandemic uh, hit in 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 march in indonesia then uh we we, we took a very uh, difficult decision but we think then it is the right time uh, due to the nature of our product that the digital signature and of course the digital id the ekyc could help uh, businesses to to still to 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 keep going uh, uh, despite the lockdown despite the social distancing and stuff so we think it's the right time for us to to let people know that uh, we are in in this business uh, since a long time ago we got big clients we got a lot of uh, even more than 5 fortune 500 companies uh, as our clients of course only for their operations in indonesia and of course also to 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 let the enterprises know that we are not just providing the digital signature during this pandemic but we built the total solution for user onboarding with your businesses and insurance bank or even fintech uh, leasing companies and even uh, you know um, during the beginning of the pandemic the uh, president issued a decree that all leasing companies and banks must give um, restructuring package uh, for their debtors whenever they, they, they apply for, for restructuring and one of the challenges is to process like thousands of uh, restructuring applications every day during the lockdown during the pandemic if they were going to use uh, hard copy papers like traditional uh, measures right so we also built uh, e-restructuring uh, platforms we offer it to all major uh, financial institutions yeah so yeah so pretty much it's uh, the advertisement spending is unprecedented for us it's uh, 10 times from last year during this pandemic and of course the the pivot of the, it's not the pivot it's, it's it's more like providing a total solution so the whole internet the, the house uh, without an internet connection so we provide everything for them okay wow that's that's, that's good to hear you guys are adjusting to it and then uh i'm gonna head over to the investors now uh uh, so I'm sure uh, some of your companies, right, uh, in your portfolio, that they must have been uh, heavily affected by COVID. Right? So, uh, what has your advice been to them, especially the ones who are struggling, and 
how 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 should they survive the crisis and once they survive what's next let's nico <laughs> okay well simply kayak gini sih you know in my case if the company is in crisis and you don't have enough runway to continue just shut it down right why prolong the pain so uh that's that's my advice to uh to them but uh you know we we do have companies that is uh navigating through this crisis and especially on the on the fintech sector uh because the the central bank uh has been uh you know issuing the uh the apa tuh not initiative tapi you know, something like a uh restructuring of the debt right uh, you know including the banks uh, financial institutions uh, and uh, and the p2p and it's and, and in this case uh, uh we have one strong uh, uh p2p player which they i think they and they are quite conventional they are dealing with uh, invoice uh, financing but to those uh that deals with uh you know especially uh, uh small merchants uh they are affected re- uh, uh, uh quite uh significantly but lucky they have enough liquidity to make to kind of maintain you know the their operations um um and uh, we are quite uh about and when we are quite uh supportive to uh to them uh be- because here's the deal right i mean uh, uh every crisis uh always given um you know enough uh, uh window of uh, uh, window of, uh, of opportunity um and especially for a, a cpc under a national bank like uh, like ourselves we we are very interested in uh, in understanding more into p2p uh and especially on other uh, instruments that can uh, um uh that can be uh you know the next growth uh of um of the bank for example uh we launch uh our venture debt uh, initiative along with the sembrani uh and it's uh, monitored under ojk um initially when you launch something like this um because the valuation is 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 quite ridiculous to back in the day uh and then money is flowing in into indonesia uh the initiative to launch venture debt is you know was not uh on the right uh, uh strategy for you know for 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 anyone because but now because the valuation is 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 cut and uh and you don't want to and good founders don't want to sacrifice you know equity just to uh, just to raise their inventory for example so uh what we do uh is to give them loans uh, under warrants uh, of course but on the other hand we are also uh uh you know did some initiative to channel some of our money uh into our portfolio especially on the p2p so uh when because because when you uh, when you have a crisis like this and especially on the uh, fintech p2p uh, sector um you need liquidity and those uh, uh li- i think li- liquidity becoming our, uh, our our opportunity uh right now you know as a, as a, as a, as a as a new fund uh and uh we we just start investing this year um and you know and and we i think we are uh, we are among uh, into do we are we are among uh, the most active investors still during this covid we closed nine deals this uh, you know during this <laughs> this time but yeah So yeah. So um yeah, um but on the other hand, some sectors really thrive. For example, our uh, our Tani Hub um uh company. Um definitely we see a G- uh, increase in GMV, uh, right? Into do. <laughs> we 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 see increase in a uh, uh in their GMV almost uh, almost uh, a triple digit bahkan. Yeah. Hey. That's a good ini by the way. <laughs> okay. So uh yeah kita juga ngelihat ini uh, you know we we so we thought it was um, apa ya? It was it's gini if anything this this covid you know what they're doing to the startup world it's it cre- it creates a correction you know. 
for the ecosystem. Um, you know, we'll see. <laughs> How about you, Patrick? What, 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 uh, what, what, what kind of advices have you been giving your uh, portfolio? No, I think I think Nico did that question justice. He really hit the hail, uh, the, the nail in the head. But maybe I'll just supplement with a couple of more things. I think um, you know COVID has had a varying effect to you know various portfolio companies of ours, right? So, like Nico said, there are some COVID beneficiary that actually benefits from you know the change in consumers' behavior um, as a result of COVID, right? Um, for some of our um, sort of portfolio companies that are a little bit harder hit. You know, we oftentimes hear about like, you know, the founders taking a pivot, you know, they, they, they have to cut costs, cut marketing costs and this and that, right? I think across the board, a lot of companies are doing that. But I think, you know, when we talk about pivot, one of the advice that we're trying to give our portfolio companies is also that, you know, do, do something that can be accretive to, you know, your brand that's, you know, for, that, that can be accretive to your long-term brand or, you know, build equity value to your business. So if you're selling, for example, coffee, you know, don't all of a sudden sell like, you know, pajamas or whatever, right? Because we're staying at home more. Like be, you know, sort of uh, uh, more long-term minded in, in sort of uh, uh, in, in your pivot, right? Um, because I know this is really the first crisis that I think the Indonesian tech ecosystem is going through. I think, you know, from its inception, which I think Nico is one of the sort of pioneers in the, in the venture capital space in Indonesia, definitely I had the fortune to kind of witness and be a front row seat in seeing how, you know, the ecosystem developed. And, and sort of what Nico did with MDI, right? But I think nowadays the market conditions are very different. It does involve, uh, it does require VCs to, in, to invest in a very different way compared to say five, six years ago. So I think, you know, at Intudo, it's always been our intent to, you know, be Indonesia only, just like, you know, Sambrani and, and you know, uh, BVI, right? Uh, and to be involved, right? And then also the third thing that, that I think, you know, really we build into our identity is really the, this identity of being independent, right? So I think being independent does have its own merit. Um, we do count over maybe 20 Indonesian families as um, LPs in our fund. So I think during times like this, one of the things that we do very actively is also to encourage a lot of partnerships between the, 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 the startups that we invest in and as well as the more traditional businesses, right? Because if there was any silver lining in COVID, I think it has really, I, I, think, I think COVID really exposed a lot of the vulnerabilities in, in more traditional businesses, but it has also become an accelerant in how third generation or fourth generation businesses in how they could adopt or accept technology as part of their value chain. Oh, oh yeah, I, 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 I agree in that part. Uh, Long-term game is, is, is always the way to go. Uh, uh, Nico touched this uh, earlier. Uh, you two, uh, BRI and Intudo, are well, amongst the uh, active ones uh, in the COVID times, right? Uh, so, I mean, for, for, for your current portfolio, right, uh, especially the one in, uh, needing uh, injection or for your uh, new companies that you're looking at, right? I mean, what kind of uh, additional criteria you're looking at to convince yourself to, to, to open your checkbook? And then, because a lot of people are actually closing their checkbook, checkbooks. They're not. They're not doing this. But you guys are actually. It's up there uh, the, among the very active ones. I mean, what? How? How? What convinced you? Or, or uh, what are you looking at? Uh, Patrick, go ahead. Okay. Thanks uh, for letting me go first. So I mean, I, I think for us, um, you know, we, we we have this internal discussion all the time. I think. The world kind of behaves, you know, if there was a pendulum, it always swings between greed and fear, right? Um, and, and right now it's maybe more toward the fear side. I, I think for us, ever since our inception in 2017, we have always tried to take more of an even keeled approach towards investing in startups with a more sustainable business model, right? I think before, before COVID, before luck and coffee, before we work, I think, you know, we've always, you know, placed an emphasis that, you know, like, like Nico, I think I read one of his articles saying value over valuation, right? And this, this, I think it's a very famous quote from him. I think, you know, we, at, at, to the best of our ability, has been trying to do that since inception. And that's why I think if you look at our portfolio of 20 companies, you know, 25% of them are actually even that positive, right? So I think for us, um, we have always uh, placed the importance of building a sustainable business model uh, in, the, in the startups that we look at. So I wouldn't say that's an additional criteria just because all of a sudden COVID is hitting us hard. Um, I would say that we just try to maintain our even keeled approach, 
not be too carried away with fear, nor you know carried away with greed when times are good, but just you know just uh, keep our heads down and uh, and, and keep at it. Yeah. All right, Nico. Well, thank you for uh, any uh, Patrick for, for the quote. Uh, I have to remember that next time. So, <laughs> uh, okay. So here's the deal, right? Uh, we are we are in a um, we 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 are experiencing uh, uh, this trend. Yang, uh, what they say is uh, uh, this embedded finance companies, right? When you look at Google, uh, they started off as a search engine and they become a uh, uh, you know. Uh, um, mostly, you know, they, they, they become sort of financial companies themselves with Alphabet and so on, uh, Amazons, um, etc. So uh, we are looking into, uh, you know, this emergence of this type of companies like Gojek with GoPay and Grab with, uh, with Grab and Ovo. Um, so that's why when we uh, at MDI, we look at you know the, the 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 biggest bank in in the country that can really support us in uh, in our next journey to uh, to solve this uh, um, this this financial inclusion uh, and whatnot. So uh, what we are looking right now is uh, you know definitely you know um, we look at uh, we look at growth. Uh, we don't really, we don't really look at um, at the quality of founders uh, anymore, like like face value, right? But we look at fund at fundamentals these days, and that's why um, I guess um, you know back in the day, if you still remember, if you have the right pedigree, and most likely you will get uh, finance, right? Or uh, I don't know, maybe now too face value if you're a I'm going to say that anyway, um, <laughs> but, but right now we look at fundamentals, really, we look at fundamentals and, 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 uh, uh, and how they can, uh, uh, jump, you know, leap, uh, make a leap from, from, from one sector to another. And in the end, and they grabbing the whole ecosystem of, uh, of the business. Um, we are, uh, beyond fintech companies. Uh, well, I mean, we, we, we invest beyond fintech companies, uh, because, uh, it allows us to, uh, to look at different sectors, but in the end, they have to converge into financial inclusions, you know, and SMEs. Uh, and there's no, uh, and there's no, uh, that's not the best time to start uh, looking into a, you know, a SMEs platform or, 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 any, or FinTech in, in especially financial inclusion than 2020, I guess. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm gonna go back to the founders now. Uh, uh, so during this pandemic times, right? Uh, what do you wish uh, to see more from your investors for for support? Uh, what kind of support do you think uh, startups need at this point? Uh, is it financially or more? Uh, if you do, uh, please elaborate. I mean, not just for yourself, but for the, the, the startups out there that you think will be generally required uh, needed. Uh, here's them, go ahead. Sure. All right. I think the first one is uh, to maintain and trust here. Uh, it's tough time for both ends, for both the founders, the startup and investors. And it's not easy to, uh, to thrive in this kind of moment. I think uh, to build uh, the trust requires communication, sometimes over communication. It's very, very important these days. Uh, also the cons, what I think Patrick has mentioned, you cannot meet face to face. So utilize like Zoom, Google Hangout or anything as much as possible. And I would say also it, it regards on the um, transparency from the founders to, to tell anything what kind of help they need. They need. And I think that the third one is very pragmatic, anything cash generating. <laughs> so in our case, for example, back then when, uh, when Nico left MDI, uh, the best thing I think what, what we get from MDI is the Synergy. Uh, Telcom Group opened up the Synergy within uh, their sister companies, uh, their sub 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 dealers, for example, can go to the market together. And by the time when we get invested by MDI back in 2016, up until today, I think the synergy value has gone up more than 10, 10 times already through the collaboration. So I think this kind of value that founders should look from investors, 
um, talking about you know the transparency on the reporting for example the trust uh, if you raise fund helping to get another investor on board uh, or some participant participants participant around and then uh, related to commercial or business development would be super beneficial that's the way i see it all right, uh, Marshall, how about from your end? What kind of support do you think required at this kind of time? Similar with Irsan, trust, faith. Uh, you know what? When Nico made uh, an investment in Privy, like back in four years ago, I guess. Maybe five. Five. <laughs> five, yeah. It was a very big bet, you know? Who could ever predict it? a bright future for Indonesian SaaS and this is a truly Indonesian SaaS I mean uh, we got 200 employees here all of our engineering teams are here in Yogyakarta so it's not uh, made in Bangalore or, or made in Ho Chi Minh or, or somewhere else right and there was a very thick uh, glass ceiling for, for Indonesian SaaS like uh, please name like five Indonesian SaaS has been used by six out of six largest banks in Indonesia, be it uh, privately owned or uh, government owned banks. Six out of six biggest insurance companies in Indonesia. Three out of three biggest telco operators in Indonesia. And not to mention that <clears throat> uh, Telkom and Telkomsel uh, and Bank Mandiri. They, they, they own a stake uh, in Privy ID. And with that fact, uh, it was a burden for us in order to get the other five banks, the other two telco operators to become our client. You know what is at stake? At Privy ID, right now, we are processing like personal data of their users, first thing. We know the phone numbers the email address, all the personal data address and stuff, the government ID, of course. All of the documents signed being processed and stored uh, on our servers. Right? It's very sensitive issues that, oh, uh, you're owned by Bank Mandiri. How about the, the customer's data, the, the business data of the other five banks? But we managed to, to get through that. It's because our product quality is is i have to say much better than than the competitors uh, so for now what we need is that in this unprecedented uh, group so to give you a, a picture uh, in february this year we only got like almost uh, 200 enterprise clients 400 enterprise customers so uh, we got 600 uh, as per today and right now we are processing more than uh, 90,000 transaction with signature or ID checking every single day. So uh, what we need is that more money. Why? <laughs> uh, when Nico invested a couple million of dollars uh, five years ago, uh, actually a couple millions maybe like three years ago, right? It's, it was a series A, so Nico started investing during the from the seed round, right? So before you were uh, a millionaire, bro. More and more, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so more and more cyber attacks are are directed towards us because yeah, we got a lot of precious data. We are processing credit card applications, loan applications, loan agreements purchasing agreements, uh, supplier agreements, everything. Right? So we need to upgrade the capacity and the capability of our IT security uh, in which it's, it's not cheap. Yeah? For a firewall, which got AI capabilities and we need a million of USD to upgrade the capacity of hardware security modules to sustain our uh, transaction per second uh, performance for the cryptographic signings, then it's another couple of million USD. And uh, those investments when we optimal, if we don't spend on, on marketing too. So maybe those facts that we got all those big clients, maybe most of you didn't know that fact after uh, before I told you, right? So 
So yeah, uh, what we need the most from our investors is faith that, right, uh, we were growing not so fast in the past years. Yeah, but uh, I I think I could say with 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 uh, quite the amount of confidence that we are one of the best Indonesian SaaS uh, as per today, and and we need uh, more support, more funding. Yeah to grow uh, bigger and better from this. Thank you. You better start calling these guys after the call, after the webinar. <laughs> uh, okay, I get, uh, for the, in the interest of time, I got a very, uh, it's quite, uh, it'll be quite interesting question for all of you, all, all four of you. Uh, uh, just a quick answer from all of you will be nice. Uh, uh, after the pandemic ends, right? As Nico said, it's probably uh, end of next year, uh, or mid next year, right? Uh, would, you, would you be more conservative or uh, stick to the basics and very, very, be very good at what you're doing? Or are you be more willing to take risks in ideas that might not be part of your core businesses or investment pieces for investors? And why would you do that? Uh, Patrick, you can go. Yeah, no. So I think for us, um, maybe just, you know, partly to my earlier point, I, I think we'll, we'll continue sort of our pace and, and, our, and our sort of uh, perspective on, on investing. I think we, we won't go crazy. You know, all of a sudden, if this thing blows over, we're not all of a, all of a sudden going to invest in like, you know, five companies a month, right? So I think we're just going to keep our own pace. Uh, I, I think your point about focusing on basics, um, to my answer earlier, I think, you know, we've always placed an importance on that, right? especially for some of the a little bit later stage companies, the series A is really, really our bread and butter. So yeah, we're not going to go too crazy either way. I, I think we're just going to stay in the middle lane and, uh, and, and keep our heads down and, and have an even killed approach. Uh, okay. Uh, here's that. Yeah, I think my favorite uh, way of operating here is the best defense is offense. But anyway, to, just to keep it real, uh, there's a playbook that I took from LinkedIn. It's all about the 70-20-10 bucket. So always put the 70% of your budgeting investment uh, for your operation on the core product or core market. And then 20% related to something expansion. It's still related to your product, your market, but it's just a nice touch to grow your revenue or your uh, lifetime value from your customer base. But there's always the 10 part, the 10% part that something that you haven't thought before because uh, a lot of innovations come from the, you know, from like toys, so to speak. Like who who would have thought like Gmail becoming the, I think uh, de facto email that everybody's using these days. It comes from the 10% when it comes for, for Google. The same thing with, uh, I would say, G, uh, G, uh, Google, Google, uh, Google Map, yeah. So I think that's the kind of mindset that Charles should have, like always focus what you have in hand, but never forget what might be Driving in the future. Okay. Uh, uh, Marshall, how about you? Well, as for my industry, uh, I think that it, it, there is no urgency for us to, to, to tweak uh, our grand vision of, of the product, right? So we will stick to it. But uh, yeah, one of the things that that, that that we've been uh, practicing at we believe in a, in a vision but we don't put uh, too much efforts on, on creating a plan to reach the vision because uh, as we learn the hard way from year uh, to another year that uh, we need to adjust our plan and maybe in some cases maybe a hundred percent difference from what what we have planned for yeah so uh, i think with uh, any kind of um, events uh, in the world including this covid pandemic well years like something uh, beyond two years is 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 it is something not worth to, to think of and really to write the plan uh, for now. Okay. Uh, you wanna? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Hello? Nico, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of lost Marshall already. Okay. Yeah, anyway. Uh, 
well gini i'm i'm, I'm probably gini gonna share with uh, uh you know a lot of entrepreneurs young watching uh, this talk show uh you know despite you know covid is really bad um you know uh people people getting sick people dying uh, and so on but this is the best time for entrepreneurs to go crazy right mm-hmm. it's uh you can test any your, your of your thesis that you wrote in the past maybe and see how they react you know with this condition right now so um it's, it's there's a lot of issues that can be you know misunderstood you know in this uh in this time of a uh pandemic but without covid we we probably won't go with the the first indonesia based fund that we launched uh, a couple months ago so this is the time when you try to like push forward right because everybody is sleeping everybody is uh everybody is uh, is is going back to the drawing board right and if you're fast enough today you can really launch your attacks like ilsan says the best defense is offense you should go crazy today otherwise otherwise when you wake you know when you wake up uh mid 2021 uh you know it's like uh, it's, it's it's nothing but a bad dream right but if you do something right now you know if you just go aggressive you know right now uh and when everybody wake up and you are there so um to us um you know i was always a moderate uh, investors meaning uh, you know i i i i bet uh uh i bet our money on something that is um that is not about the quite uh about uh, delusion of a grandeur like let's say, you know So I was never aiming at the unicorns, you know, when I was in uh, in MDI, and uh, and I exited quite uh, quick, and I I'm you know I think we were happy with just you know five x seven x, we're not expecting ten x or twenty x. If there's a you know one of our company actually exited twenty x, but it's only it's only one out of nine exits uh, out of MDI. Um, because when you wait, uh. <laughs> then covid happened right so uh, uh you know to me you know you have to you know whether you're entrepreneurs whether you're investors you have to execute uh, fast right and uh to me without without this, this global shutdown of of the uh, you know main economy uh we might not know for certain what works and what not going to work so uh i think this is a you know in um, in an economic sense you know as an investor or as a um startups because we are at the front front or uh, forefront of uh, of innovation and new economy uh i know you know we 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 all know that traditional businesses suffers but we in technology thrive you know and that's why you know people should jump into this uh sector more and more and it's not it's, and it's never about the the tech alone you know because tech in the end creates ecosystem that is true created you know many use cases that that is valid you know over the years and um you know without gojek we will probably won't see much of empowerment of the drivers of uh, small business of cloud kitchen you know so uh, this is the time to uh, to try out oh uh great thank uh, great answers everyone i was expecting uh, different answers from everyone and you guys deliver <laughs> uh, okay i'm just gonna go over to q and a right now i think we only have time for one uh, let me just see uh, one that can be answered uh, okay all right uh, i'm i'm picking this one uh, do you guys uh, Do you see deep tech? I guess this is for the investors. I think. Uh, do you see Do you see deep tech development uh, in the sector of agriculture? Because it uh, it seems most of the startups in agriculture are still uh, more on the fintech marketplace. Uh, Patrick, what do you what do you what do you reckon? Yeah, I think on this topic, I think uh, uh, Bro Irzan is uh, maybe more equipped to answer this. I, I think for us at Intudo, um, I think you know deep tech is. To be honest, a little bit above our pay grade, right? So I think 
the businesses that we invest in are you know more sort of uh, having technology as enablers. Um, I, I think you know we always look for an element of uh, online and offline, right, or a merge or the marriage between online and offline. Mm -hmm. So I think that will continue to be our focus, um, you know, rather than going to something that um, we, we, we really don't have a, a depth and understanding of. Okay. Uh, how about Nico? Are you, are you gonna, what do you think of deep tech in agriculture? Nah, I mean, uh, you know, our, you know, our agri, you know, our agri problem is right now is it's, it's, it's quite supply and demand. Some dudes want to solve agriculture by using blockchain. That's ridiculous to me. You know? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's way too advanced. It's way too, uh, because there's, there's, there's a lot of, uh, 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 low hanging fruits that they can do. So to me, deep tech in agriculture for Indonesia, um, I don't know, mambo jumbo to me. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I'd love to take more questions, but it seems that uh, we're, we're uh, I think that's all the time we have today. Uh, I really believe that uh, we all learn uh, something new about uh, how Indonesian investors and startups uh, are using their playbook, right? Uh, thank you, Irzan, Marshall. Uh, Nico and Patrick uh, for your time and valuable insights. Uh, and thank you everyone uh, for taking the time to be part of today's webinar. Uh, as I said earlier. Thanks, Radit. Thanks, Radit. Cool. Thanks, Radit. Thanks, everyone. Hey, Thanks, Patrick, Marshall, Nico. Thank you, everyone.